Hello everyone. Tonight on Adventures with Paul we have a change of venue. I have brought my uh, 3D printer home. It's sitting on my uh, kitchen counter now. Um, I was staying at work to ridiculous hours of the night and uh, with an hour commute home afterwards I was dead tired by the time I got in. So I bring it home. I get home at a reasonable hour and I can tinker around here. It's after 10 o'clock already, so I can play around here for a couple more hours and then just go to bed. Um, been running into some issues and I've been dealing with them as they present themselves. The first was a uh, issue with the uh, Z-axis. Um, there you can see an extra little black piece right here. It has a screw. This screw is lined up to hit the uh, end stop on the z-axis. Um, the normal way to adjust this was to loosen this screw here and raise and lower this and fine adjustment was just impossible. Now this stays fixed and I rotate this screw. I have a little wrench for just that eventuality. And that lets me get a very fine control on my z-home. I was actually using slicer and printing out multiple slices with different Z offsets and then come over here and try the middle one and see if I was too high or too low and then just pick a different file with a different Z offset to compensate and that was a pain. Um, let's see, um, I was at the Geek Group uh, last weekend and they have uh, six Affinia 3D printers and I was printing on five of the six at the same time for a while. They have a white filament and I did a lot of experimenting to see what worked and what didn't, what temperature they were using and things like that. Printed out that little toolbox so I can put my tools on the side of my printer. Got that off a of Thingiverse. I was got the uh, Z offset uh, adjust there, the box and a couple other things um, from Thingiverse. Um, I picked up a fan shroud to uh, cool the plastic. The uh, mount for it is supposed to go on top of the X carriage, but with my tensioner there, if I actually install that, it raises the uh, tension nut so that it actually hits the gear. So either I need to reprint the spacer here to make it thicker so it'll raise the uh, J head and the whole extruder so I got a little more space, or I need to reprint the X carriage with the uh, the piece on the bottom of this actually merged into the X carriage with this just not there. So I would fill this gap right in here and uh, have the holder for the shroud positioned in this area so it would hold it down below. Um, that fan I had pick up a 40 millimeter fan from Micro Center and I got the wiring all for it. I'll wire that into the um, fan output on the uh, ramps board. The fans I have to cool the extruders here and back here and here as well as that one are tied into the fan connection back there right now. I'll remove those and tie these in just to straight 12 volts so those four fans will all run all the time. And uh, this one will be under software control. Um, haven't gotten around to doing that quite yet, but it's on the list. Um, let's see, while I was at uh, the Geek Group, I used their machines and printed out some spare parts. Um, I cracked my uh, lower Z motor mount here and I cracked the upper one right there. So while I was there I printed out a spare lower and upper Z mount and while I was at it I printed out a white strap for the lower Z rail as well just so they'd match. So all the white plastic you see I did while I was there. Uh, a lot of experimenting like I said I uh, figured out what temperatures to use. Um, we're cooling down from a job I had just run. This is a circuit board mount. It is ten and a half inches long. I have to go from corner to corner on my 8x8 bed to get it to fit. I was running into all types of trouble with the ends curling, warping, and lifting off the bed. 
Here's the completed one. This was number three. Uh, the first two are already at my office and, um, and uh, holding a board to a uh, stainless steel plate. Um, originally it was straight across. I cut down the plastic to try and reduce the, uh, the forces trying to curl the end up by making this nice and thin. Um, my top and bottom here are just about parallel and the way I actually got that to work is um, as it's printing, once I get two or three layers down, I paint the end. You can see that blot. All this stuff right in here. Um, there was a lot of notes on the internet talking about ABS juice. Paint your bed with ABS juice. I got PET tape. I just ran one two inch swath corner to corner because that's the only area of the bed I'm actually using. But you can see the milky film. I, uh, paint, I wiped it down with the ABS juice and that didn't help. It was still lifting off. Somebody mentioned in a forum the term ABS sludge. Well, here's my ABS juice and it's a jar and you can see it's got the black goo in the bottom. And what I did, this is a two-handed operation to get this open. What I did was I took a screwdriver and I got some of the sludge. There we go. All right, there is a little blob of sludge. And I took this and just laid a bead right around the end of my part just smeared it right out. Some, with only three or four layers down, some of the material would get like on top and I'd take my screwdriver and scrape it away. This was while the machine was running with my little knob. I'm able to turn the speed down. I'm at 100%. I can crank it down. I cranked it down to about 50 so it was moving nice and slow. I can get in there and work and smooth it out and get another blob and do the other end. And that solidifies <laughs> like concrete. I mean, it's hold on, let me get this closed so I don't dump it all over. Okay, we are we're cooled down now. And before doing that little operation, at this point, that part would just lift right off and I can hear it cr clicking as it's cooling down. Ah. Oh. That ends okay. I actually have to peel it off. You can see there's a little bit of uh, flashing there that I'm going to have to trim away. But that's all I'm left with. You can see it's nice and flat. You don't get on a white background. Okay, there. No curl. You can usually tell the curl from the way the light reflects off the end. And you can see there's a little bit of distortion there from where it started to curl, but next to nothing at all. This end is uh, about the same. You can see how the light, it's there, it's like a mirror where it's reflecting, and as it gets right near the end, you can see a little bit of distortion. So it started to lift, and then I glued it down, and that saved it, kept it down nice and tight. Another issue I was having, um, somebody talked about how much tension you put on your uh, filament roller to press it into the hob bolt. Well, they had said you tighten it down all the way and they showed a picture where it was compressed down so there was no air gap in the spring. Um, I had been doing it about this tight, then I saw what they said and I tightened it down and I wound up crushing the filament. It, uh, the extruder was, it, it, the gear was rotating but it literally ground through the filament. I had like a uh, half moon cut out where the hob bolt ground through it. So my filament wasn't extruding. The machine was running and last night I had a couple of failures where uh, it did that much and then died. And that happened a couple of times. And it took uh, the first layer I have going at like 30 percent speed. So it takes half hour to get this far along. And then it just 
machine kept running, sounded like everything was fine. I go away for another half hour and I come back and there's no more plastic extruded. Um, I'm that thick. This one went a little bit farther. Um, here's the, uh, these are 10 and a half inches. That's for the long side of the circuit card. This is 7.7. .7. That's the short side of the circuit card. You get too long and too short to go all the way around. Well, this one failed as well. Same sort of affair. So I'm not tightening my uh, tension screws down so much, and I'm not crushing my filament, so now everything is working. Um, I'm going to get running on another one here. Uh, I should be able to get at least one more done before midnight, and then maybe uh, a second one started, and I'll just go to bed at that point. That way I'll have two more sets of long ones. I got two sets of short ones that work already, so I can get two more circuit cards mounted. And I think that'll be it. Um, let's see. I'll get this going. Um, show what else I have going on here. I have to clean that bit off. It's like on there. I'll lift it a nail. I literally got to scrape that to get that off. That's how good a cement it is on this PET film. Anyhow, that's it for now. I'll uh, catch you later. More next time.